Hello Guardians, it is Ebontis here, and in this video, what I want to cover with you guys is how to upgrade the Majestic set, which is the first tier that's legendary, up to the Magnificent set, which is the um, second tier that's legendary, and it's the one when you go to Masterwork that will actually glow white. So, this is tier two of three, technically maybe four, but we'll get to that on another day. Uh, so basically, if you guys haven't seen the video previously, uh, I'll have a comment below in the description uh first you start with the renewed set which is going to be the rare you talk to evil avante pick that one up go to the basics those are pretty quick come back to her once all those are done and then you're going to be giving this set this set does have some longer requirements to it but they're really not too bad i'm going to go through basically what you need to do on each one variances per character class hunter war warlock and uh titan I'm going to give you guys tips per class as well for the moments you need. And then in the end, I'm going to go over kind of what efficiencies you can do depending on what you've got going on for your class. There's a couple things you can kind of do in pairs and work on together, you know, two or three birds with one stone. But a lot of the stuff is going to be the same for every class. So let's go over it from the top down. I think most of these are in the same place per subclass, like the Titans helmet and the warlock's helmet i think they look the same if they don't you're still going to be seeing all this stuff it may just be in a different location but i think it's going to be the same so the first one is defeat five eaz mini bosses in a single run unless you're afk five is pretty easy to do usually i'm somewhere in the eight nine ten realm so five should not be that hard as long as you're roaming around them you have like four minutes i mean like 30 seconds a boss isn't too bad you can use your sparrow in the european aerial zone use it Use the little jump pads to get you up a little higher. That's a big one. Five bosses defeated. Finish up the run. You're good to go. Got to do that three times. Pretty straightforward. Orbs. Any of those elemental orbs, you know, and remember, when you're generating orbs, you have to be using an energy weapon. A kinetic weapon might make orbs, like this one, a fire flame might make solar, but this, like, basic kinetic weapon might occasionally make an orb that matches your subclass but again you do want to be typically using energy weapons heavy weapons subclass abilities that type of stuff is guaranteed to be making orbs like all over the place 500 of any type doesn't matter as you guys can see i've done part of the other stuff and i'm almost done with this one the orbs is not going to be an issue as long as you're picking them up the biggest thing about the orbs themselves is is the fact that you're going to need to be kind of in the fight when you kill enemies and they die they might drop an orb or two if they're a major or three or four or five if they're bigger um but when things die you need to be there the orbs don't stay on the ground like all too long they seem really short and crucible because you're typically far away but even in pve activities they don't hang on the ground forever so if something dies and you see orbs you need to pick up go over there and run and pick them up even if you die which i'll kind of explain a reason not to die too frequently but be in the fight try and pick stuff up as much as you can you've got some melee stuff you got to do you're bound to get them this is just this is likely one you'll have to worry about very little if you sit in the back and shoot everything with a scout rifle and never move yeah you'll never get any orbs but if you're in the fight Half the time, you'll probably be fine. Rapidly defeat 100 combatants. So basically what that's going to mean is you need to typically defeat things in pairs. And usually it's the same timing to be able to make an orb of power from, say, a masterwork weapon. Uh, if you kill things like with heavy weapons or a super or grenades, you get, you know, enemies chained together. That will count. This was not a hard one to do. I spent some time at Altars of Sorrow as those guys come at you in waves. This was done in no time. So all the stuff you're going to have to do, this one's not going to be a big worry either. So that's everything for the helmet. All these are going to be pretty straightforward. No big deal. Altars of Sorrow or Override. So complete Altars of Sorrow on the moon. And that's like waves of Altars of Sorrow will give you about 5%. Overrides are going to give you 30%. The easy one, obviously, there is going to be override. Do it four times. You're good to go. My advice, though, do Altar of Sorrow once. Now, for some reason, the boss wave doesn't count, but you're still going to get like 30%. It may take a little longer to do, you know, Altars of Sorrow, but there's so many ads in there that you're going to be killing. You have a lot of other things you're going to be able to check off while you do it, and I'll get to that in a little bit. So run Altars of Sorrow, you know, a full run through one time, and then you could go do Override and knock this one out a bit quicker. But at least one time in Altars of Sorrow will give you a lot of ads to kill, a lot of orbs to pick up. You know, the ads aren't high level because it's a patrol zone, so nothing's going to hurt too bad. And you can be in the mix a lot and you're just going to have a ton of stuff to pick up because you usually have a group of like uh, friendly allies out there with you and they're going to be making orbs. So just orbs of plenty, run a full altars at least once probably is going to be good. And then if you want to burn through this one later, overrides probably a bit quicker. Second one is empowerment buffs gained. 
Now, what the empowerment buffs gained thing is, is when you pick up 30 orbs of power, when you get to that 30 mark, you're going to get a buff. Now, as I'm recording this today, it says it's a prism day, as you can see down below. Um, the arc empowerment is applied because I'm on the arc subclass. But depending on the day, and again, I'm going to throw a huge caveat in here because I don't know if the prism day is making this faster or if teammates were but the way to check what day it is you can see prism day if you go to your director check the European aerial zone and click on it you can either read prism day up top or you can check the modifier over here and read about it biggest thing to know is whatever day it is are the elemental orbs that you need to pick up so at some point in all of this, you're going to have to do some solar stuff, some void stuff, some arc stuff. Depending on your class, you'll have to do it in different places. Whatever day it is, like if it's a void day and, you know, there's certain things that ask you to do void, you know, do stuff with void. Make sure that you're trying to stay alive a little bit longer and get the buff because you need to get it 20 times. Now, this one jumped through very quickly for me. I was spending some time in Altars of Sorrow. And I've run a cup like a strike. I've run a nightfall, maybe one crucible match. I know I haven't done this 20 times, so I don't know if this is bugged and procking quicker than it should be, which is not a bad thing because this is probably one of the more annoying. Or for some reason, my teammates getting a buff somehow helped me out. I'm not sure, but I know this was done for me faster than it should have been because I haven't specifically gone after 20 buffs. Now, maybe in Altars of Sorrow, I was just rolling in so many orbs and Prism Day. It just happened all the time. Maybe that's what it was. So if you do not have a Prism Day, you know, wait for a Prism Day. Go put some time in Altars of Sorrow. And this thing may be done in no time. If you because you're going to be picking up so many orbs, it's not even funny. Maybe that's what it was. Or maybe it was teammates around me. If anybody knows if there's anything going on with the empowerment buff, let me know. But that's the idea. You need to be alive long enough to pick up 30 of the same type of orb. And when you get 30, then it's going to give you that buff. You got to do it 20 times. Biggest thing, find places where orbs are being generated a lot. Altars of Sorrow, again, a great place for this. Now, as a Titan, I need to defeat 200 combatants with solar weapons. Whether it's energy or heavy, doesn't matter, but obviously not kinetic. Now, for the warlocks, it's arc weapons. For the hunters, it's void weapons. Now, remember, depending on what your weapons are, and this is where the efficiency comes in, say I use solar weapons, and I'm using a solar subclass, on a solar day, go put some time in Altars of Sorrow, three birds with one stone at the same time. Kind of get where I'm going, I'll come back to the efficiencies later. But whatever your subclass is, we'll come back to when to use that specific weapon type, but remember, you've got to get 200 kills. Going to take a little bit, but not terrible. Down here on the chest piece, we've got blind wells or wrathborn hunts. You've got a couple different options. I did one tier three blind well because I just walked into one and people were in the middle of one and I got 40%. Blind wells go pretty quick. People are exploding things. And the nice thing about blind well is you've got the anthema in there, the guys that are kind of glowing. And if you pick up the thing that they drop, it gives you a buff. And what that does is basically recharge your abilities, your super, your grenades, your melees very quickly. And so if you're going for grenade kills, which we'll get to in a little bit, not a bad way to get the boost. So blind well is a good way to f have a lot of ads to fight because you'll be fighting a lot. Again, more people are going to be making orbs. So more pe more orbs are going to be on the ground, which also leads you to getting more orbs, more buffs and all that stuff. So blind well is not a bad one. Wrathborn hunts can be farmed very quickly. Um, there's a way you can actually go in and... You know, basically trigger a Wrathborn hunt, unequip things. There's stuff you can do for the Wrathborn hunts. But my advice, just go drive into the blind well. It's going to be pretty straightforward. Tier 3 was 40%. And then if they do the tier 3 and then they do the bonus like harder boss afterwards, it might be 50%. You could be done in 2. So depending on what group is in there. And if you don't see a group, you know, go back to orbit. Reload the Dreaming City. Drive back into the blind well. And then, you know, you're bound to find a group at some point. Just sometimes it may take a little while. Well. So, excuse me about that, sorry. Key fragments collected. When you do strikes, you'll get 12. Nightfalls, you're going to get 16. And all the other stuff you're going to do, you're going to pick up enough key fragments. Don't even worry about that one. For my Titan, I need to get 100 kills with arc grenades. This one's actually probably the hardest of the three classes. It's not truly that difficult. Um, I went top tree arc because I have double grenades. So that's a nice little bonus. Also, go look through Destiny Item Manager or any of your stuff 
and find anything that you've got that has demolitionist, demolitionist, demolitionist. That way, if you kill things with those weapons, you're going to get your grenades back faster. So again, if you're spending time in Altars of Sorrow, find a demolitionist weapon if you've got it. Maybe you're doing most of your kills with, you know, your... You know, your weapon that matches over here, like I need solar weapons, so I'm doing solar weapons. But every so often, I come down here, blow up a couple guys with a grenade launcher, get my grenade back a little quicker, throw another grenade. So again, anything with demolitionist is going to help. Salvager Salvo has it on it, so some of you guys may have that straight away. But if you have anything with demolitionist, that's going to help you get your grenades back quicker. For a Titan specifically, for a Warlock, my advice, well, specifically, specifically Warlocks need to go solar grenades. You guys have the easiest one of all. If you're a warlock and this thing's been out forever, sun bracers. Solar grenades burn longer. This is a really good time to actually go to Altars of Sorrow because you can just coat an entire spawning area with grenades and they just last forever. Solar melee kills grant unlimited solar energy for a brief time. So if you solar melee ability one enemy, you can basically chunk out four to five solar grenades. Then you can just absolutely napalm one of those areas big time. So... Solar grenade kills, not going to be as difficult here. But again, pair it up with um, anything demolition is going to make it go faster. And there's one of the trees for a warlock that makes it go even faster, but no big deal. For the hunters, you need to go void for your grenade kills. So my advice, put on Orpheus rig. So if you've got it, if not, you can still do this. But Orpheus rig is going to tether more enemies. Find, a, find like a lost sector with a big group of enemies, whatever it is. You can find a public event that's got a decent amount. If you can, public events are going to be harder because you're sharing kills. So my advice, go find a lost sector with a big group of enemies. Most of them will have one at some point. Run around a busy room, group them all up, and then tether, and then throw your grenade. If your grenade does damage to any, it does it to all. So if your tether is attached to 10 people, you throw your grenade out there, and you kill all of them with that grenade damage, guess what? That's 10. So tether... And void grenades are going to be the way that hunters are going to want to do that. Titans, we just got to try and get our grenade energy back. Pretty straightforward. For the boots, Europa public events or battlegrounds from Season of the Chosen. My advice, battlegrounds. Why? Because you'll be done in three. Pretty straightforward. Public events are going to be a little slower. Yes, I mean, Europa public events can be hit or miss. Any public event can be hit or miss if it's fast, slow, made heroic, done quickly. Either way. Battlegrounds, just do three, you'll be good to go. And there's another reason later on why some of you guys definitely are going to want to do Battlegrounds. But three Battlegrounds, again, lots of adds to kill. You're good to go. So then you've got two things. These I'm going to tell you right now, you can do these together because every class matches. For my Titan, I need Void or Stasis Orbs basically collected in playlists. Now, playlists specifically count only to the Vanguard Strikes playlist. Your main Crucible playlist, Control, Rumble, Elimination, Momentum Control. It's your main playlist for PvP. And then Gambit's little sad self out here. Those are the only ones. Nightfall Strikes do not count. Ask me how I know, because I already tested it. So, you're gonna. this is where you're going to want to go. If for me, Void, everything I've got's Void at that point. Pull out Void Weapon. Pull out another void weapon, switch over to a void subclass. Everything's void, doesn't matter what. So I'm shooting and killing everything with void that I can. You'll be going through at least three, You probably a few, couple of these things. So, you know, you may not pick up every orb or get every kill, but that's okay. And then I also need to melee while in void subclass. Doesn't matter if it's a powered melee. You could have used your melee ability, you just walk up and normally punch an enemy. As long as they die to your melee, you're good to go. So... You're using your Void subclass in both of these, so these are two that you want to do together. Any playlist activity, my advice is your basic strikes, and then melee while you're, while you're using your Void subclass. So pair these together, because Warlocks, it's solar orbs and playlists, and solar melee kills, or, or melee kills while in your solar subclass. Hunter, it's Arc and Arc. So whenever you go for these playlist activities, punch stuff while you're in there, check both of these boxes at the same time. Pretty cool. Finally, down here, we're going to come down to the cloak or your class item, you know, butt towel, armband, whatever. First one is going to be complete crucible glory. So competitive nightfall strikes can be at the lowest difficulty, which is my advice anyway, or matches and trials of Osiris. You can go to trials if you want to, but more power to you. 
My advice, just do your basic nightfall strikes. You just got to finish three of them. And when I say nightfall strikes, you can do the lowest. Just literally click on nightfall. Adept at 1240 still counts. You're good to go. Cross that one. Um, I need arc orbs in the European aerial zone. Guess what? When I'm in the European aerial zone as this character, I'm going to be arc everything. So then while I'm doing my three runs in the European aerial zone, killing at least five mini bosses. And again, it's the team has to kill five mini bosses. That's why it's like, it's not hard to do. So I have to do three runs in the European aerial zone. I have to get 50 arc orbs. I did one run and I got 45. Now, granted, I was probably kind of active in there, throwing my grenade around, killing as much stuff as I could. But there's enough things in there. You'll have this one, no problem. Just make sure you match your, you know, abilities and your weapons to the damage type when you go run EAZ. So when it comes to the Warlocks, you guys are going to want to go Void in the EAZ. And Hunters, you guys are going to want to run Solar in EAZ. Pretty straightforward. The last one is probably the most annoying to some extent. Titans get the easier version here. We have the harder version on the grenades, you know, kind of a toss up for the Titans. You need to kill powerful hive. Guess where I'm going to tell you to go for powerful hive. You're going to want to spend a little extra time in altars of sorrow until that is done. So whether you run two altars of sorrow and then run, you know, two overrides. Well, guess what? You still got to kill the powerful hive. There's plenty of them running around this section. Uh, when it comes to warlocks, you have to kill powerful fallen. Now, this week when I am recording this, as of July 7th, the Nightfall is Exodus. Nope, sorry, it's not Exodus. It is Fallen Saber. A Nightfall is going to have some more powerful enemies in there. There's quite a few in there to kill. Just run the Nightfall multiple times. You're going to get this done at just about the same time. Depending on what the Nightfall switches to over the you know future weeks. I know we've got Insight Terminus. That one's not really one. Um, all you really probably need to do, go find a strike. Go find Exodus Crash. That one's covered in Fallen. It's one of the few that actually is completely covered in Fallen. You've also got the Cosmodrome. You can roam around. If you find a public event in the main Fallen areas, so like here in the steps, that one's definitely going to be Fallen. Public events are typically going to have some major ads in there. You've got uh, a Fallen Saber, as I said. You've also got the Devil's Lair, loaded with Fallen. You go to the Trost Land, right here. This public event, this is always fallen. The public event in the Trost Land, also always fallen. Those are going to have groups of ads, especially if you make them heroic, even more. So not too bad, but just not going to be quite as, you know, constant for you to find powerful hive. For hunters, your powerful enemies are going to be Cabal. Remember when I said Battlegrounds is going to be good for one of you guys? Guess what? Hunters, spend some time in Battlegrounds. You're likely to see plenty of powerful Cabal in here without even trying. You got to run it three times anyway. If you're not quite done, run it one or two more times. You're good to go. So overall, the ones that you're going to want to do together, the orbs and playlist strikes and the melees while in that same subclass, do these at the same time. When you're running playlist activities, regular Vanguard strikes, your core playlists for PvP. I probably wouldn't honestly go PvP or Gambit. Um, just punch stuff and, you know, kill, you know, make sure match your weapons and your subclass to whatever it says for Titan. I'm going to run void everything. So those two do together down here, orbs in the EAZ. Just make sure if you're going to do orbs in the European aerial zone, run whatever, same thing, weapons and subclass and go to your three European aerial zone. Good to go. This whole time you're picking up, you're checking a lot of the other boxes, so it's not going to be too bad. Uh, finally, when it comes to the grenades, I need art grenades. Well, I don't have a specific subclass to run when I'm doing nightfalls. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to run art grenades and nightfalls for sure and see how many of those I check the box for. If I'm not done my time in battlegrounds or altars of sorrow, those are other places where you can do those as well. So that's going to cover most of this. It's actually really not that bad. I think they've made it a little bit nicer this year overall. But most of this stuff will get checked off as you work on these other activities, because theoretically what you have to do, no matter what, three runs in the EAZ at a minimum. You can do three overrides or four overrides, but, you know, a full run in Altars of Sorrow, three overrides, you know, we're up to six, seven activities. Blindwell, probably got to run that two or three times. There's a butt ton of enemies in there. Rope. 
at least three battlegrounds, if not more, depending on your subclass. Public event, it's up to you. But again, battlegrounds is going to be quick. So we're up to like nine activities that you've got to do. 10, 11. Got to run three nightfalls. That's more. All of the, you're going to do 12, 13, 14 different activities just by doing everything that is required. So check off all of those boxes. If something is missing at that point, then you can go specifically grind. But I doubt if you aim, like you aim directly at the things that we're doing here, playlist activities, battlegrounds, nightfalls, blind wells, altars of sorrow, EAZ. If you do all of those things, the rest will probably be done. Couple recommendations if you guys are looking for weapons to use as well. If you have exotics, there's some fun ones. Um, if you're going for solar weapons, Prometheus Lens. Not bad. Use some scavengers. Uh, another one that's actually really good that's been around for a while, Sunshot's actually going to be fun. Uh, Fighting Lion is a primary grenade launcher. That one you're going to have ammo with all the time, so if you need void kills, it's not a bad one to throw in there. Graviton Lance causes things to explode. That can be fun. Hard Light literally can do all three. Arc weapons, Trinity Ghoul. This thing is fan freaking tastic. Just lightning, especially if you have the masterwork, Trinity Ghoul, just chain lightning everywhere, lots of lots of things dying. You've also got Risk Runner for Arc. Um, start shooting as you get hit, especially if you're fighting Fallen at all. Uh, Risk Runner, chain lightning, just going absolutely everywhere. Um, trying to think of any other weapons specifically that would be great for energy. That are going to like chain and explode. TQ's Devination, you could probably get some explosions out there. Ruinous Effigy, Void. You could use the little Void Orb and just melt some things that are sitting around you. If you have exotics, dig through and see what's going to work for you. I haven't even used an exotic yet and I've been okay. But if you're really trying to be efficient about it, Sunshot's going to explode stuff. Risk Run is going to be pretty good. Graviton Lance, Cold Heart, Prometheus Lens, Trinity Gold. You got a lot of options in here. So dig into your arsenal, pull one out, infuse it, just and you'll be good to go. For exotics, not too many are required for Titans. If you guys are going for art grenades, there's not a ton that you can do for grenades. Armamentarium, though, depending on if you want to use top or bottom tree. You can't get more than two grenades, but if you want to run bottom tree for Titans so you can kill more things with your super, cool, then you can use armamentarium, still double grenades. Hunters, as I said, tether things. Orpheus rig, you can tether even more make your grenades even more efficient. Warlocks, sun bracers for your solar grenades. That's probably the biggest one. Everything else is pretty straightforward. That should cover it all. I know that was a bit of a lengthy video, but I wanted to cover everything possible for this one. Give you guys tips, pointers on everything. So hopefully you guys found this video beneficial. If you did, you know, drop a like below. These take a little while to put together. So thank you guys for making it to the end. Um, if you have thoughts about anything that I may have missed here, if there's a class that's different, if there's an exotic I forgot to mention, throw it down below in the comments. Um, any tips you guys have, share those with the community. Always appreciate that. If you guys are new to the channel, you like the style of my videos, want to see more guides from me, hit that subscribe button. It's a nice way to help support me for nothing. And if you want to see future videos, that alert bell next to the subscribe button will help my videos get into your YouTube feed. You guys can find me over on Twitter. It's just Ibantis. And then on Twitch, I do stream Destiny 2 as well as a variety of other things. I work through Mass Effect 1. Mass Effect 2 will be coming up as well. So I got like Kenna Bridge of Spirits. I have so many games, variety stream games that I'm going to play. So stay tuned. A bunch of fun stuff coming. Thank you all very much. Have a good one. I'll see you soon.